Hello folks and welcome back to another program. Today I'm hosting another episode of Best in Show and the instrument today is French horn or the, the piccolo trumpet. They sound very similar but in a previous video I went ahead and spoke about the French horn and how much I love it. Today I'm listing the top five in my opinion French horn solos in pop music from the 60s the uh, retro Baroque pop staples of today's music and influential sounds that we still admire to this day, uh, the French horn uh, and where we hear it and how good it sounds in certain things. And with a certain caveat, the piccolo trumpet is in one of these. Last time we did Best in Show Vibraphone, I suggest you check that video out. I'll link it right up in here. and. Um, with that out of the way, I love doing these kind of videos where we look at best in show uh, instruments of the 60s and 50s where we hear this this thing and it's it's really, really impactful. Uh, then makes, make her, makes or breaks a song. Without it, it, it wouldn't be the same song. And that is truly how I feel with the French horn. It adds so much. It adds absolutely so much to the mix of these songs, so let's get into it. But before I do, check out Manza Illustrations. Manza Illustrations is my business. With my wife, we go ahead and make high quality pieces of artwork for you guys. From commission pieces, t-shirt designs, logos, children's books, anything you've got rattling around in your head that you want to make a reality, I can make it a reality for you creatively. Uh, reach out to Manza Illustrations today. The link is in the description down below. I'll get you a free quote and we'll get started today. Uh, that is how I'm able to have time to do these videos for you guys, is supporting a small business like Manza Illustrations. So without further ado, let's get into our five French horn solos in pop music from the 60s. 60s music is my favorite kind of stuff, 50s, 60s, 70s, but mostly the early to mid 60s. Incredible stuff, unforgettable tunes, unforgettable memories that I haven't even lived but feel like I did. Uh, I'm an old soul. This 1967 copy of the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour features a solo done by David Mason uh, on the piccolo trumpet, very similar to the French horn in every way except the look of it. The look is more like this instead of like this. It's not circular. It's just a actual, like, like a regular trumpet would be just tiny. And there are French horns in that mix. So, but that track alone, Penny Lane, is my number five uh, from the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour. Now the Beatles released Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields Forever as a 45 with the A side and B side. That might be how you know this song uh, is the single version. Horns are huge in adding depth to a mix. Uh, it could just add so much. Penny Lane, what an incredible track for the Beatles to incorporate piccolo trumpet, uh, sounds just like French horn, into the mix, into that uh, whole thing, to tell the story of that, all those uh, little businesses like the fire station and, and the barber shop, that wholesome mid to late 60s uh, innocence is uh, maintained in Penny Lane, and I absolutely love that track. Up next, we've got 1969 and 1970s, Bridge Over Troubled Water um, by Simon and Garfunkel. Now, that is the name of the album, but the song I'm going to mention is called The Boxer. You can almost mistake the French horn in that and not even hear it and think it just sounds like a early synthesizer, Moog synthesizer on keyboard or on an organ, but in fact, it is a French horn. <laughs> That solo that goes over the main chords of the verses uh, for the solo section uh, bring chills and really evoke a great vibe uh, for the boxer. It kind of breaks up the uh, chorus and the verses and uh, brings for a little time of reflection and a calming sense. So the French horn in that song, incredible. That's what I love about 60s music. It was innovative. It, it brought different things. Like where would you hear a French horn ever again? Uh, and then uh, later on, we'd hear sax solos. That that paved the way for 80s music to bring on sax solos. And we even sometimes hear sax solos today in today's music. But early pioneers like the Beatles, um, Simon and Garfunkel, um, the Beach Boys, uh, influential music pushers who 
push the envelope and develop the more fully embodied sound through the medium of pop music, it really brought us into a whole nother realm as music listeners. We had never heard anything like it at the time. Um, and so number four is The Boxer by Simon and Garfunkel. Next up in the number three spot, I've got God Only Knows by The Beach Boys, uh, opening the track with beautiful French horn. With such sweet and supple timbre to the, uh, to the instrument itself, it opens up beautifully. The tone they were able to achieve, uh, chilling when you hear it, honestly chilling. It brings uh, a certain sweetness and even a tear to your eye. Brian Wilson, quite an innovative person, pushed music further than anybody in, uh, of his time period, even before the Beatles got to doing that, uh, and George Martin got to doing that. He himself pioneered it. Because of being influenced by such people as Phil Spector uh, back in the early 60s, Brian Wilson was then able to implement those kind of strange instruments like accordion mixed with harpsichord and French horn over top to make God Only Knows the staple that it is today. It's a classic, so that's my number three. At number two, we've got For No One, a song sung by Paul McCartney and written by Paul, uh, which features um, the best and sweetest of the French horns that you probably have ever heard. That solo arranged by George Martin was played in a very uh, traditional English kind of sense uh, to that sound. That very all over the place, kind of, but memorable. Like you can remember and hum it and whistle it. And it just adds so much to a little acoustic song, a folky song like For No One. Uh, I can imagine Bob Dylan actually singing a song like that. Uh, your day breaks, your mind aches. Like, it's very traditional folk, but then amplified with the use of the French horn in that middle section. And again, a very sparse track with uh, not much going on. You know, you've got some acoustic guitar. I don't even know if there's all that much else. Bass, a little bit of tambourine percussion, and um, there's no real drums on it, no real electric guitars on it, and you've got that beautiful French horn taking it to the limits with that kind of accompaniment. Uh, so my number two, For No One by The Beatles on the Revolver album. Kind of off topic, but the Revolver album is now getting a uh, reissue, if you don't know. Honestly, I don't think Revolver needs a reissue. We have enough of them and they all sound incredible, but this is a 2012 version from the 2009 version. So that's uh, what I've got on vinyl. And last but not least, what takes the cake for me is from the Beach Boys Today album on the song Kiss Me Baby. Uh, now, this is the song I mentioned in my uh, vibraphone video. I mentioned how sweet and how moving and how honestly uh, emotional I get when I hear uh, that part it's played by the French horn over top. Late, late last night we said it was over. Incredible over top that in the backing track. Sometimes I will honestly play the backing track with no uh, vocals over top of the song Kiss Me Baby uh, just to hear that sweet sound, that uh, French horn. So sweet and so beautiful and so well placed over the chords that's being played under it. Um, who, who, Brian wrote that. I was gonna say whoever wrote that. Genius. Brian. Brian Wilson wrote that. Please listen to just the the backing track. I, I mean these songs are so simple but so effective at bringing the heartstrings forward and, and really tugging at them for me at least. Brian in the early 60s had such a way of making you not feel alone in your solidarity and, and these feelings that you were feeling emotionally, uh, whether it be in your relationship or in your friendships or in your life moving forward. And these these day-to-day -day things that we all face are amplified by these backing tracks that are so dense and sweet and lush and um, carefully, carefully, uh, 
carefully, carefully played and nothing overbearing, everything mixed correctly uh, to make quite a track. That whole second side of the Today album. So that, my friends, concludes my look at the French horn, one of my favorite instruments in 60s pop music. We've now looked at the vibraphone in episode one, now the French horn in episode two. What's gonna be the next instrument? Maybe a classic organ, because you've got a ton of that cool stuff in the 60s. So we'll maybe touch on that in the next episode. Until the next time, folks, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with a friend, and you can find me lounging to a melody. Take care, folks. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you, folks, for tuning into this episode. If you do feel so inclined as to follow me on social media, you may gladly do so at Manza Media Art and Manza Media on every other platform. If you like prints, I've got an Etsy shop where you can see some of my original artwork and fan artwork. I'll catch you folks on the next episode of Manza Media.